stages. That's what we're talking about right now. Stages. This thing, I thought of it. It came to me. It was like one word. I was like, stages. Going through stages. Moments where you, you're just sitting there and you find yourself looking back on something in the past that brought you to where you are in the future. Something in the past that captivated you and made you want to be something. That gave you an idea or a dream or something to get you to where you are now. Just some little, little idea. You know what I mean? Stages of thinking, of reasoning, of of doing things, of being a go-getter, going out and doing something, uh, being yourself, doing all these different things. It's a stage, and they repeat themselves. And the thing about stages is you have to commit to the stage, and you have to understand, I guess. So here's some stages that I came up with. I wrote them down as I was thinking about it, and I got written down, and I've got this whole this whole thing that sparked off this, but we won't we won't spiral into the whole thing. Just the beginning of it. All right. So the now stage. Okay, we're in the now stage. We're living life now. Okay, this right here. You know, this relationships, work, school, uh, friends. Not as much into what we were doing a year ago. A lot less of that. A little bit more people time, and I I would describe it as. You know what I mean? Getting out there more. Um, not having a much as not giving yourself as much time as you used to. Uh, not following your own personal uh, uh, dreams or goals or things that you know you want to pursue or you want to pursue with pe- uh, with certain people. We'll, we'll get into that though. That's like a different kind of a side topic. Okay, um, YouTube. That's a stage, right? We've done it all the time. You've seen it. Uh, Frost Clan channel. That was great. Why did we stop? It dulled out on me. I just I wasn't feeling the cons- the you know I I could. I could do one video a day. I don't know why I don't do one video a day. I just thought about that. Why are we not doing one video a day? Maybe I should get on that. Um, but yeah, two videos a day, you know, two sessions a week. It's a bit excessive, honestly. And with the time and what was going on and what built into it, I could see exactly why it fell through and why I fucked myself over once again. Something that had a lot of great potential, I fell back on. And now we're either going to have to start again which I, we're gonna, I'm hopefully going to do. I'm, I'm talking with some people right now, and we're hopefully going to get these things back in motion. Um, the new gaming season is starting up. There's a lot of potential going around. Everyone's getting jobs now. Everyone's finally following themselves, and the potential for us and everything is finally there, and we're going to go and get it. We're going to captivate these things, okay? Uh, this is the big stage I thought of. This was like the, the turning point for us. Um, you could think of in terms of Call of Duty, um, we have the beginning of when we first started playing Xbox and gaming. World at War, Zombies, Summer Nights, All Nights of that fun stuff with uh, with Corey and Mike. That's what we did. And other people too. I don't even remember who else we did it with, but those are the two names that stick out the most. And we did that on Call of Duty on World at War Forever. Mine Over 2 came out. We did that game so much with a whole bunch of people. We did crazy stuff in that game. We loved video games. We loved Call of Duty. Um, Black Ops came out and it died. It kind of died. We saw an era of less of all three of us getting together, more of us going off on our own tangents, doing our own things. Okay? And then Modern Warfare 3 came. And we, all three of us, we, we attached to it. Me and Corey attached to this game specifically. We loved Search and Destroy. We loved, the, we, we came to love it. We, could, we loved it. For something in gaming, we loved Modern Warfare 3, Search and Destroy. I don't know what it was, I don't know what it was, but it brought out so much in us. We enjoyed it, and that's what we did for that year. And we met a whole bunch of cool people along the way, and it's sad to see that we don't really communicate with those people anymore. And it's sad to see everything that kind of built off that stage and how that stage faded, and it's not there anymore. Like the zombie stage, when we used to love that in Black Ops. Black Ops was the zombie stage, there you have it. Zombie stage in Black Ops and World at War. That's what, the, that's what those games were. The zombie stage has died off, hence in Black Ops 2. It's not there anymore. You know, um, I thought about when I thought of the Modern Warfare 3 search, and I, I thought of that, and I said to myself, Call of Duty is coming out again. Ghost, Infinity War, Search and Destroy. What we love in games is coming back to Call of Duty. We need to... I'm excited for the... I'm not excited, don't get me wrong, but there's more thinking about the game than there was with Black Ops 2. Black Ops 2 destroyed Call of Duty for me. The co- I don't know what it was really, and you know, I feel like my connection. I had a decent role in my connection failures, going off of a wireless connection that was really crappy. But well, there's other things, that, honestly. But I think that's the main reason why I didn't like that game. Um, but we, I don't. I, we're not talking about that, okay? We've got the work stage. Here's a good. Here's a big one. Work. 
Um, over the summer, I found myself working and doing a lot more for work than I have. Uh, 30 to 40 hours a week all summer, honestly. That's what, three months of that? That's a decent amount. And where I work in my place of employment, it's it, it got to be a bit much. It made me question uh, the work thing and if I what I was doing and work pushing myself towards it and the stress that I was putting myself in. If you think that's possible, it's possible. You got to be there. And you got to live it to know how crazy it can get and how much you can wear yourself down with it. Um, I, I, I wondered if it was the right thing, if it's where I wanted to be, what I wanted to do. And I learned, yeah, I'm fine with it. Um, I talked to, to people about recently some stuff that's come up at work when it comes to wages per se and uh, treatment of the employees and stuff like that. It's, it's a whole nother video topic. I talked about it. I put myself out there. I finally did what I knew I've had to do for a while. I got exactly what I asked for and what I w thought I deserved. And I'm happy with it now. Now I'm watching as everyone else complains as I sit there and say to them, go and do what I did and you'll be fine. Okay. So we're going to learn from that. Work is squared away right now. Work and now, or I'd say pretty much squared away. They had to now throw some curveballs here and she here and there, but for the most part, they're squared away. All right. I forgot, I forgot this. I didn't write down the school stage. So I'm going to say that before I forget it. The school stage, right? Everyone loves high school, school, college, middle school, all that stuff. Um, your, your education and grades kind of have to come first before things. Uh, whether or not, uh, like for example, uh, this year already, we're what, uh, two months in? Almost at the end of the first trial, we've got a month left already. Jesus, the time is just flying by. It's crazy. Um, I, my work ethic has been a lot different than it has been in the past, but my work ethic is getting places. 4.0 right now. And in all the classes I have, at least like a 95 or higher. I think the 90, a 95 is the lowest I have in that class. So that's not bad. And my work ethic is not, I wouldn't say as good as it has been in the past, but it's getting me a lot better results than work ethics in the past have. Um, when I talk about work ethics, I think more, this year it's kind of been more of a, I don't want to say like a cramming, but kind of when it comes to like certain projects or things waiting till the night before they're due kind of late night after I maybe do something with someone or we do something to do it or waiting for the weekends after a long day at work to just sit down and, and force myself to do it. For some reason, I'm getting better results doing that. Um, I'm learning better for some reason. Uh, like last year, how last year we said, despite of working 25 to 30 hours and driving so long to work every day, we managed to get a 4.0 and get way better grades than we did in the past. We didn't know how that was possible. It's the same thing this year. I'm barely even home or have any time to just sit down and cultivate and collectively think. Tonight is the first night I feel like in weeks where I've kind of just been at home. I've sat and I've thought. I've written some stuff down. I've gotten some ideas, some things, and I'm, I'm talking about it now. And it's been a while. And it feels weird because say, I, was, I was thinking yesterday and time, like, tomorrow I'm going to take a day for myself. I'm not going to do anything. I'm not going to go anywhere. I'm not going to really talk to anybody outside of school and whatnot. And I'm just going to just collect myself and, and, let, the, and let these notions and let, and let everything fly. And I have. And we've got a nice solid thing there. We've got a nice solid thing here. And it's great. You got to do it every once in a while. You, gotta, you have to make time for yourself every once in a while. Uh, so the school stage, you know, do your schoolwork. Get your good grades. If you don't have a 4.0, you need to be studying. You need to make sure you're getting a 4.0 because everyone's capable of it, all right? And you have to at least have a decent foundation when it comes to grades. All right, when we have the friend stage, friends, relationships, girlfriends, all that stuff, I, I would say falls in the same category. I didn't do the friends video yet. We're going to do the friends video eventually. Controversial topic, just like love, okay? We'll get there. It's all written down. It's all going to happen eventually, but you got to have the drive. I was thinking about doing a friends video today and the love video too, but I never got, I didn't really get to it. This, I, I got to write, I got to sit and think and writing this stuff down. So this is what I decided to do, right? Cool, right? Go with it. Run with it, right? We can't, oh, I want to do something about comparing writing and speaking. Those are two different things, right? Speeches and writing. You know, writing a speech and then saying the speech. You know what I'm saying? This is free balling right here. I have notes written down. I don't have any sentences really or anything like solid, mostly words and, or phrases. You know what I'm saying? Okay, so friends relationship stages. We're running out of time here. Um, I'm trying to keep these things short or whatnot. So friends and relationships, right? They're things. We love those. And I'm finding myself committing to a relationship, um, being true to my family, and true to my two friends that I have. Okay, we'll go into the friend tangent later and describe why we only have two friends compared to everyone else we talk to. Because I know and I'm cool with everybody. Everyone knows me. I'm cool with everybody. Everyone's down with me. I can talk to anybody about just about it. You know what I'm saying? But I only have those two friends plus relationships with maybe three, plus family or parents and stuff like that. So maybe you can add like five. But um, there's like that kind of tangent thing and where that comes from, I guess. So that stage squared away. I'm doing good in the relationship. That's going great. 
I'm not really worrying about it too much. It's letting it flow, letting the times go, just doing me. I've learned to do me, okay? But when I learn to do me, I've learned to do me by doing me with other people. And, and in those kinds of situations, it's not doing me per se for myself and for captivating myself, which is where this is going, okay? So all those stages of square, we've got the now, YouTube, uh, we'll call it Xbox, Call of Duty, that kind of thing, uh, gaming in general, work, friends, school, all those stages are pretty much squared away. You know what I'm saying? We're at a, but there's some things we can improve on, okay? We've got um, uh, missing the quote old time. Okay, okay. So I looked back to and I was looking at some MW3 search videos and some montages from people. People we used to watch to. People that we used to flock to on YouTube when it came to the old bad kid pot, the old bad kid show, and when they called that, and they called this, and before they had all the problems. Um, back when Woody was kind of cooler than he is now. Um, I like I liked his content more back when Blade did more of his own content. Now he just kind of goes off. He's, he's he's not he's not his old self in my opinion, but I still watch him. I wish he'd do some sun and chills. You know the stuff that we could relate to, which makes me like these people. Um, who do we watch a lot of now? Uh, now it's just kind of like news oriented stuff, like ETC, Inside Gaming. I don't even watch Rooster Teeth that much. I don't really watch the Let's Plays anymore. Uh, I feel like that's the reason for time, but it kind of it kind of like you go through the stage, right? You watch it, you're into it, and then it gets old, and you don't really watch it anymore. You know, it's just like I really don't watch Rooster Teeth as much anymore. I still, I'm finding myself watching podcasts a lot more, listening to them. You know, when I'm in my spare time, listening to music a lot more, um, doing a lot more of that kind of stuff. Uh, not so much the actual, no, excuse me, uh, videos and stuff. But you know, the same old people are still there. But when you go back to maybe an old video, or an old topic, or an old gameplay, something old that you remember, and you remember watching, and you remember. I remember MW3 Search distinctively and how much fun we had with it and how much we did with it, you know, how good we were at it. And I want that again, you know. I, I've I've um, Battlefield Beta came out, right? I was playing it, and I did fine. I'm doing great. Posting up good scores, solid scores, consistency. I can't wait to do it with Mike and maybe Corey in the future since he's got his, his shit together now. The future is promising, but commitment is the key. We have to find an original idea, and we have to make sure that we commit to these things. We talk about commitment all the time, but it never seems to fall through. And we need to be serious about it. And I'm gonna we're gonna we're gonna talk about this. Not in this, but I will talk to talk to them about it. You know what I'm saying? All right. Parallels uh, with friends get hard. Okay. So like we said, the gaming thing. Me, Mike, and Corey, our schedules are so so different. We all are trying to balance and kind of own things you could call in a personal life or matter. Like for me, it's a relationship. Corey, it's a semi relationship, so it's cross country. And then we all have work. Mike has school. And it's hard to find time to balance these things and get together and have like a night just for like an hour where you're free, and you're not worn down, and you're not dragging, okay? Like, when I mean that, I come home on a Saturday or a Sunday from being at work for six to eight hours, maybe even longer on a Sunday, and you're just dragging, kind of. Um, you don't really want to think or do anything, per se, but you got to commit, and you have to be willing to do it. Now, um, with the way my schedule's set up now for weekends, I can definitely roll out a video on the Let's Play channel. I can definitely, we can, de I, I can do my part to make these things, these shows, and these things possible again, and to live the dream, okay? We said pals with friends are harder. It's harder to get things done with all three of us like we used to, and find the time to be friends and do that stuff, because when you have real friends, it's hard to be real friends, because life gets in the way of that people don't seem to understand how life actually gets in the way of things that are real that's why you know they're real because life gets in the way all right um and we have here's a big one here's a big one watch this dreams or ideas are possible i have i, I realized this again today and i i feel bad for slipping away from it at a point but i remembered that i have one dream in life and that is to have some kind of YouTube channel with my friends, Mike and Corey, and do something innovative and unique to us on there, whether it be with gaming, whether it be with life. I don't know, but that is my dream, okay? Or to work for a company like Machinima or Rooster Teeth, but working for them by not like going to college or whatever, because I'm not going to college. I, don't want, I couldn't sit at a desk for another four years. And what, I, and what the idea is, I'm going to spring it out right here at the end, it, at the end of the stages here, committing to YouTube for a year, six months to a year, maybe more if we're seeing the growth we want after high school. We start now. We start in the next month or two. We get down. We get a schedule going. We, get, we develop. We get the dates. We get the times. We write this stuff down. We commit to it because me and Core talked about the podcast. We talked about the show, okay? What I came to realize is a comfort zone. 
We don't do the show as much anymore. So we don't get to talk to each other. If we, all three of us, sat down again like we used to during my own for three search, and we'd always we we would talk to each other every night or every other night, okay, about life, about what's going on, just funny things that are happening, and we got to talking about those things again. We could have a good weekly show, but we don't see each other and talk to each other enough to where we can produce that kind of consistency and good content. You know what I'm saying? And I don't honestly have enough time to collect myself and motivate myself enough to where I can do it by myself. I want to do it communitively. You know, I'm going to try one more thing with one other person. Kind of, it's an idea that I've had for a while, but I think that could spur something cool when it just comes to talking. But it's going to be hard convincing, but we'll, we'll see what happens with that. But the thing here is commitment, you know, uh, seeing if I can get them on board. I don't want to go to college. Right? Corey's uncertain. Mike still has a year left of high school. You, know, you can work full time at, at Big Bob's making like nine, $9, $9.50 an hour. The thing I thought about too yesterday was like, I had, um, really quick, career paths. There's three paths I have. One, right in the military. All right. Career path two, you wait a little bit. A month, a couple months, a year, you know, maybe live out of here for a while. If we can get this this idea going that I just thought of now going, you do that for the however long. You see where it works. You work full time. You see if there's any opportunities there with working and with not going right into college or this. You know, you, you kind of leave your options open for about a year to two years. You know, you kind of live life full time instead of part time like you, like you do in high school. I consider the way I live life now part time. You know, school is full time work, relationships, and then a the little bit of me time. You're not really living life full time. See, what happens when you work, live life full time is school and work flip-flop. In high school, you have school, which is like work. Close to eight hours a day, five days a week. You're committed to it. But work, in my opinion, the work I work, it's a lot easier than eight hours a day. You're getting paid. You're not thinking really. You're not, you know what I mean? It's a little bit different, in my opinion. You're getting something out of it that's not like intelligence or whatever you want to call it. Okay, and I'm gonna try to get people to commit to this because I, one thing I've 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 seen honestly the, to the people that I really um I, the people that I actually know and like am close to, they're uncertain about their future. There are multiple people that I could get on board this idea. We could all get together and inspire to do something great with this because we're all passionate about it deep down and we all can contribute different things to it. Okay, that's what I want to do, and I'm gonna write that down right now before I forget. All right, stages, guys. We go through them in life. Um, your young stage, your childish stage, where you're all frenzy. You're friends with everybody. You you come to realization with things. You're working on realizing things. You're becoming who you're finding what interests you. What kind of hobbies and things you like. I like talking with people. I like creating things with people. I like music. I like videos. I like YouTube. Still, I still have a place in my heart for gaming, and I always will. You find out what you like to do and what how you want to spend your time. And I've learned about myself really simply here. That I like to plan for the big moments. I like to do one big thing every couple months to compare to one kind of small going out thing every week. You know what I'm saying? Kind of like you call it like you could call it like in a relationship with a girlfriend, like taking her going to like a movie or going out to dinner or going somewhere. I don't even know, like I don't even say like bowling or like activities like that. You know what I'm saying? I, I, it's hard for me to even think like it's you know like you could think of bowling, just taking putt putting. I don't know. I don't even know what people do nowadays with that kind of shit because I don't do that stuff because I don't. I don't really enjoy that because like, it's like you've had your fix of that in the past, right? So why are you going out and doing it now in a way? Okay. So there's that idea really quick. Throw that crazy thing out of there and out of, that's an idea. All right. But I plan for the big moments, you know, we had a big one Friday, Friday, big moment, ton of fun, 30 seconds of my concert. Oh my God. I want to go to another concert. I want to go to Simple Plan, Rise Against, and a whole bunch of other people. Okay. Experiences like that. One night experiences every once in a while, you know, to the vacations I want to go on this summer with people and the trips we want to take and and this, the commitment. It's all about commitment. And I'm going to write down all the names of people that we can get involved in this and I'm going to hit them up in the next couple weeks to months about committing to something like this. The common thing that we share is uncertainty. We're all uncertain in a way of where we want to be in the future. What exactly, what college we're going to, what, what we're going to do in college, what we're going to do for the rest of our lives. You're uncertain. So why not commit to something for fun while still working, while still developing yourself, while still thinking about the future, but having multiple options with the future? I thought of it like this. I work at Bob's. I have every potential to be offered a management spot with Bob Evans, honestly. They've said that to me already now. 
So you think you leave your option open when you work full time for a couple months, you're going to get probably offered some kind of management spot or something bigger than what you're working currently because you're open to that. You will take that opportunity. So boom, there's a career path. Okay. There's something new. All right. And when you're doing that, you can, well, I'm, well, let's say I'm doing that, right? I'm training that. I could still be doing this thing with them. I can inspire them to do something like that at their jobs. There's nothing wrong with when you're in your 20s for like as long as you're saving money, as long as you're committing yourself to something and you know where you want to go, there's nothing wrong with living, working kind of like a minimum wage job full time, being a manager or something like that and just doing that for like 10 years while you're working on something. You know what I mean? Because the thing is, is this YouTube thing, why we need to start now, we need to captivate it now, is because it's going to take time to grow. It's going to take time to get to where we want to be. We have to make sure that it's possible. Me and Corey said that the potential and everything is there. The thing that's hard is just commitment and making sure it happens and the consistency of it. That's the hardest part for us. Getting back in the comfort zone with it all to where we can be funny and be ourselves again when it comes to these things. Because we're not. Because we don't have the time and we don't do it as much anymore. So we have to find that again. That's the goal. That's the plan. All right. Thank you, guys. Remember stages. They're there. They're everywhere. Look forward to maybe some things. There's no promises anymore. I don't promise things. I just go out there and do them. I'm trying to find myself again. I think that's what I thought about today the most. Myself. What I want. What I want to do. So thank you for listening. Stages, guys. This is cool things. See, these right here is this is what I like doing on YouTube, right? People don't really find it. You know, give it time. You never know what'll happen, right? Live your dreams. Live your ideas. Go out and get what you want. That's what you gotta do. You gotta remember that and you gotta keep doing it. Thank you guys for listening and watching stages or whatever whatever. And I'll talk to everybody later. Thank you.